So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how did I get a 95% in my class 12th examinations. So this video is part one of the two part series in which I decode everything that helped me get those 95 plus percent in my class 12th examinations in CBSE. So in part one, I'm going to be covering the basic ideas. I'm covering the things that can help any person studying for any particular board examination regardless of what stream they are studying in and in part two i'll be discussing specifics of class 12 science examinations and it will be more specific towards cbse so in this video i'll have general actionable tips and tricks that will definitely help you improve your marks regardless of the board and the stream that you're studying in so before i get started with the content of the video let me tell you a bit about myself and what exactly i studied so I was a student at New Era High School in Panjgani and I studied in the science stream for CBSE and I had uh, physics, chemistry, maths, biology and mathematics as my subjects which were all four pure science subjects and a English subject. So of course I gave my board examinations in 2020 which was a very weird experience for most of us but fortunately not for me. My last paper was the biology paper which was on 18th of March in 2020 and after I had given my last paper, the same night it was announced that the remaining examinations, the remaining class 12 board examinations are cancelled. So the marks that I received were for the papers that I actually gave in writing. So I did not receive any, I did not receive marks from other subjects, you know, taking the average of my top two subjects or anything like that. So again, I got a 95.2 percentage in my examinations. My mark sheet I'll put somewhere over here so that you can look at all my grades. But let's get started now with the video. So the very first step while you're preparing for any examination is to know your priority. Are you preparing for any particular entrance test or is your 100% focus only on the board examinations? For example, if you're a science stream student, do you have your focus set on your JE or NEET examinations and do you have a goal of getting into the IITs or do you want to do something else, do you want to go to a different university for which you need your class 12th marks and you put your entire focus on your class 12th. So this is a question that you need to answer first to yourself. If you're preparing for JE and NEET, there's no point in giving some, there's no point in giving a lot of focus in your class 12 board examinations. Of course, you'll need to give some uh, you know, at least some preparation for that, but you do not need to focus it. You do not need to make it your number one priority. Remember that your number one priority will always remain your J or NEET examination. But for the other bunch of students, which includes me, who want to go abroad or who want to go to a different university like Delhi University or any university which takes you on the basis of your class 12th marks, my focus and your focus was should be completely on your board examinations. I personally did not even prepare for the JEO need because I knew that I wanted to go abroad and there was no point in studying for it and I would just be wasting my time and thus I would mess up my grades in both places and I would not be able to get good marks anywhere. So know your focus and focus exclusively on that subject itself. So now let's get started with the tip number one which is effective scheduling what many people do while making their daily timetable is they put some time for example from 2 to 4 pm and they say that i'm going to be studying at this time now you definitely have blocked out that time but you don't know exactly what you're going to study so you might think that let's skip it for today and you end up skipping the study session and you do not study at all what i advise you instead is to put something in in that time block. So for example, from 2 to 4 p.m., put exactly what you're going to be studying. So for example, if you're studying physics, put right there that you're going to be studying physics from 2 to 4 p.m. And if you're going to be studying physics, it is recommended that you also mention what are you going to be studying within physics. So if you're going to be studying mechanics, write down explicitly that I'm going to be studying mechanics from 2 to 4 p.m. And this will drive your mind and to tell your mind that I cannot skip that session because this part is important for me and I have to complete it. So another thing, and this is uh, this is my personal thing, I don't know if it goes for you as well, but note taking while lectures were going on did not personally help me a lot. For example, writing down what the teacher is explaining and just writing it down in, in your notebook never, never helped me. And this is not just me. This is a fact backed by science that taking notes while the lectures are going on do not actually help so much in increasing your grades or improving your grades. 
so instead of wasting time taking down these notes which are actually not quite useful what you should do is while the lectures are going on pay attention and write down the questions for whatever the teacher is giving you the answers to so for example your teacher is teaching you something and you are taking down you're taking in the knowledge at the same time write down the question for what the teacher is teaching so for example if she if he gives a definition of something write the question what is this and once the class is over take a break up about 1 to 2 hours from that subject do not study that for for that time and in the end of that time sit down and do those questions and solve those questions and keep solving them on regular at regular intervals so it is really really helpful if you keep solving these questions at regular intervals because with time you keep forgetting stuff and once you recall everything in your mind actually what you retain increases more than you actually knew before and your retaining power increases as well so keep these bundle of questions separately and keep doing them at regular inter- intervals maybe each week maybe every alternate days but keep practicing them at regular intervals so you do not forget them this thing what i explained now was called active recall and active recall is the method in which you keep you know the word suggests the meaning itself that you keep recalling to your mind whatever you had learned before so that you do not forget it always remember that your goal is not to finish a syllabus your goal is not to finish reading one chapter and to you know and so for example if you complete one chapter you might think that right now i have learned everything i do not need to go back and study it very good you might think it at that time but take a gap for a week and when you try to solve the questions you will not remember anything so once you've read the chapter once try to keep re- revising that same chapter on at regular intervals so your mind retains that knowledge this method is called active recall in one more way in which you can practice active recall is very simple is by solving a lot of questions no matter what subject you're studying solving questions helps a lot for example if you're doing a theoretical sub- a completely theoretical subject like biology you might want to do questions orally you might write it down for better retention but if you do orally you will be able to go through a lot of questions in a short amount of time So active recall which is again backed by science helps the most in improving your grades. There's something called a 80-20% rule in productivity. What this rule says is that 80% of your results come from only about 20% of the efforts that you put in. So this theory extends right to your board examination paper as well. Now let's take an example of a 70 marks physics question paper. So The total marks in this paper are 70 so the 80% of these marks will be 56 marks so these 56 marks will come from only 20% of the effort that you put in so the 20% of your effort might my, my so the 20% of your effort might be just studying for an hour every day and just keeping on revising the same topics for an hour and these believe it or not this effort is going to give you all of these 56 marks which are very easy to grab so in physics this 56 mark these 56 marks will be questions like define what is this derive this equation and questions like this which are actually very straightforward and do not involve a lot of thinking so they are actually very very easy so these 56 marks anyone should be able to achieve the other 14 marks however come from a lot of hard work and these other 14 marks will be tough now of course when i say 14 marks i don't mean exactly 14 marks about the other 14 marks will be tough and for these 14 marks you'll need to put the other 80% of the effort so doing all those fancy questions from the huge textbooks from the large textbooks these questions will help you in gaining only those 20% marks so if you are a student struggling to pass that 40% or 50% threshold do not get lost in these huge textbooks and try to and try to do a lot of tough questions and try to do something that the toppers are doing you try to study for yourself you know you are responsible for yourself so if you are not able to cross that 50% threshold do only the things that will help you get those 56 marks first without without being really very good and consistent at getting those 80% of the marks don't ever move to the last 14 marks so for most subjects in most streams these 56% of the marks are directly available in the textbook that the board has given to you so for cbse or ncert textbooks 
So these textbooks themselves are going to help you get those 56 percent marks. Now, one more thing is ask a lot of doubts. Again, as I said earlier, you are the person, you are the only person responsible for yourself. So if you are getting stuck in any question, do not think about others. Do not think about what others might think. What if I ask this question in the class and other people might think that he doesn't even know this much. Do not think about that. These examinations are important and who knows, they might even end up defining the kind of person you are 10 years from the date. So do not mess up your future thinking about what your friends right now will think when you do not even know most of the world. This was something that I used to struggle with a lot. But after a lot of thinking and after what reading some books and whatnot, I finally understood that people don't really care what you're asking. People care about themselves and they will work on themselves. So do not get lost in the thought that what others might think and be free and ask even the tiniest of doubt that you have. I'm sure your teachers will not, uh, you know, will not refuse to clear your clear out your doubts. So the last thing that I want to address is the misconception that many people have. Many people think that the board examinations are a very huge deal and, and they're very difficult and I cannot cannot handle the stress. And to be honest, I was a part of this group right until the end of my class 10th boards. During my class 10th boards, before they had even started, I used to think that the boards are a very huge deal and I won't be able to, you know, handle the stress. It won't be easy. I won't be able to get what I'm expecting and whatnot. But once I'd finished with the first paper of my class 10th examination, I understood that all of that is BS. It is really, really nothing. The board examinations that I was writing in the exam hall were actually way simpler than what was being taught back in school and what the papers, what the practice papers that we were solving in the school. So the papers that you're actually giving in the board and you're actually giving in the environment actually end up helping you a lot. So the papers that you're actually giving in the board examination hall are way simpler than what the image that you have made up in your mind. So also along uh, along with it, one more thing is that choose your friends wisely. Now, this point is something that does not get said enough, but I can't stress this enough. It is one of the most important things. So I am very proud to say that my friend circle in, back in high school was really, really brilliant. And they always used to encourage studying over anything else when I was in my 11th and 12th standard because we knew that studying was important and we needed to get marks to secure our future. And we knew that this one year of hard work is going to pay off a lot in the later years of our life. So every single friend of mine, they used to encourage me, they used to encourage each other to keep studying whenever they had free time. We used to sit and solve question papers when we had free time. Even when we had small recesses and even when we had breaks from our classes, we used to sit back in the class and we used to discuss some of the questions when we knew that we anyway did not have anything to do going outside. So yeah, this was the part one of my two part series. In the second part of this uh, series, I'll be explaining specific steps that I took to get good marks in the subjects that I particularly studied that were physics, chemistry, maths, bio and English. So yeah, I hope this video was really helpful for you and you were able to gain some insights from the video. Please stay tuned for the next one. Thank you so much.